Coming into the season, the St. Louis Cardinals felt that they were missing just one little piece. That piece to the puzzle is left-hander Mark Mulder, the National League Player of the Week. It's a matchup we've been waiting for. He'll go against his former teammate from the Bay Area, Tim Hudson. Atlanta felt they needed that missing piece. The right-hander fits the bill. A showdown between these two coming up next on FSN. Welcome to Turner Field in Atlanta, Georgia. Home to the Atlanta Braves. They have won 13 straight division titles, and tonight they will play host to the St. Louis Cardinals. With my partner, Al Barbosky, I'm Dan McLaughlin. We welcome you to Cardinals baseball. A little different buzz in the air, even though it's the first month of the season, but you've got two guys that are now in the National League, former teammates, and two of the hottest pitchers in the major leagues. Well, outstanding pitching. And that's what it's all about. Remember last time Mulder took the mound, he was matched up against Roger Clemens. Well, everybody in the National League knows about Clemens. You will know about Tim Hudson. He's as good, and it wouldn't surprise me if the scoring would be as low as that last outing. And we are expecting a very nice crowd here tonight in Atlanta, Georgia, for the Cardinals and the Atlanta Braves. We're at Turner Field. Home to the Braves. The Cardinals kicking off a six-game road trip tonight. Two guys may have success, though, against those starters. Former Cardinal Brian Jordan and Roger Cedeno. Pretty good numbers we'll tell you about when we come back. Run for the Atlanta Braves. 13 straight division titles. Last season for St. Louis on their way to a division championship. Some great moments. Let's take you back one year ago. That is hammered into right center field. And the Phillies on a home run by Tomey have taken the lead 2-1. to one. Wow. Here's the 0-2. That's ripped into right. Will it ride out? Jim Edmonds has ended it. Cardinals win it 5-4 and 13. A long day of baseball, but worth every second of it. As Edmonds makes his way around the bases, the Phillies lead, the Cubs are in next, and the Cardinals can do their little hopping thing at the plate to celebrate the victory. A lot of moments like that on their way to 105 wins and only 57 losses, and the National League pennant. Things have changed, though, in 2005. Mark Mulder is in the fold for the St. Louis Cardinals, and Tim Hudson now for Atlanta. Hudson will face this lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines, David Eckstein, followed by Larry Walker and Albert Pujols here in the first. Edmonds is the cleanup man tonight. Then Scott Rowland, Roger Cedeno, very good numbers against Hudson. Mark Gritzelanek, Yadier Molina, and Mark Mulder will bat ninth and on the mound for St. Louis. Let's meet Tim Hudson. His numbers brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Uh, just outstanding numbers. You see 2-0 record, ERA under one. He's given up one run or zero in all four of his previous starts. He is a master battler, and what the Cardinals are going to try and do is elevate his pitches. Everything is on the on the corners, in and out. Everything is down. They want to bring the ball up. Auto tire defense behind Hudson. You heard during the pregame show, Don Sutton talk about this team. Very good defensively. Jordan Jones, Mondesi in the outfield. Betamit for Cal, Giles, and Franco. On the infield and behind the plate, Johnny Estrada was very good offensively last season. David Eckstein will lead things off for the Cardinals. His average at 254, looking for his first National League home run and four RBIs. And he will dig in against Tim Hudson. This should be a lot of fun, and we hope you enjoy it on FSN. Midwest, the first pitch a little inside and a ball to David Eckstein. Out times Hudson will try and get ahead with a pitch, and the Cardinals are really going to try to not go after that unless it's elevated. If you hit his pitches that are down, you just pound them into the ground. Sounds like Mark Mulder. Sounds like they have a pretty good philosophy. One of the things he does too is he really concentrates and try and hit the outside part of the plate. Doesn't waste any time. The 2-0 pitch in there for a strike. It was 740 with our first pitch as Mark Mulder is watching his current team and David Eckstein battle his former teammate Tim Hudson here tonight. 2-1 pitch. 
A little capper foul, two and two. Very good control, but you see he gets a lot of ground balls, two to one ratio, and that's the key. Remember, you talked about their defense. Bobby Cox used a very positive to him. He said, we're trying to be Cardinal-like in our defense. That coming from the manager that's led this team to postseason after postseason. How about all the movement on these pitches to Eckstein? And, and that's what people talk about with Tim Hudson. Our fans haven't had a chance to see him. We haven't had a chance to see him live. But everybody says it's like watching Greg Maddox, except he throws about five miles an hour harder. And, and still, he's not a, a terrifically fastball pitcher. He's just terrific movement and location. And Eckstein drills it into left field. Coming on Jordan. Did he get it? Trapped no. He trapped it. And it's a leadoff base hit for David Eckstein. Very nice effort by the former Cardinal and an Atlanta Falcon. Brian Jordan, but clearly the second base umpire, Dan Iasona, got out there and saw that he had trapped it. Tries to sell it to the umpire, but the umpire hustling out there didn't buy it. Now it's Larry Walker hitting 258. Hard to believe Brian Jordan is 38 years old. DJ told me he said he wants to play next year here in Atlanta or St. Louis. Right. Like to end his career possibly with the Cardinals as Walker is bunning, lays down a beauty. Hudson throws to first. That's not in time, and the first two have reached. What a start for St. Louis. How about Larry Walker? First inning, bunting against Tim Hudson. That's your MVP from 97 laying down a bunt in the first inning. Well, he was a slugger back then and drove in runs. Now he knows he needs to get on base for the other sluggers. And you don't expect him to drop down a bunt. Neither, neither did the defense. And a nifty one right there, and he hustles his way. What's it tell you, too, about how many chances the Cardinals think they might get against Tim Hudson? They're going to have to manufacture some runs here tonight. That's exactly what it tells you. It's you better, you know, runs should be at a premium. Sometimes you get these marquee matchups and they don't materialize. The one with Clemens and Mulder did, and we, I'm sure this one probably will too. Here's Albert Pujols, runners at first and second. Roger Clemens has got to be saying, why did these teams have to make this trade when I'm still playing? Because he faced both these guys and both went nine innings, and in Mulder's case, nine plus of shutout baseball. And Hudson went nine shutout innings. It was a no decision. The Braves won one to nothing in 12. A one pitch inside Albert Pujols. And they hit. say that Hudson consistently owls around 91, 92. Occasionally will hit 94, but uh, he varies his speeds an awful lot. That last one was a 94 mile an hour fastball. And inside right there, but remember he primarily gets guys out, but he'll kind of keep you honest with that good heater inside a ball and a strike on Pujols good pitch a lot of movement Strada looked like he set up on the inside part but it hits perfectly out and down and away 93 miles an hour but that's that movement he used to throw a lot of splitters and now he's gotten away from that but sometimes a sinker looks like a splitter Set up inside on Pujols, and they strike him out. I don't know about you, but it seems to me that a lot of teams are trying to pound him in, more so this year than I remember. Well, it, you know, it seems like some of these teams get away from pitching strengths. You know, most hitters like the ball out away from The where you don't see a guy do a lot of damage, especially a guy that can drive the ball. He's going to drive the ball if the pitch is in the middle or away. But the pitch inside... And here you see the sinker, bottom just falling out of it, but it's on the inner part of the plate. It's the movement which gets you, though. Here's Jim Edmonds, one out, runners at first and second. Hudson trying to pitch out of a first inning jam. Runs into trouble here, Edmonds drills it. They're going to wave in David Eckstein. The throw from right field, Mondesi's got a gun, it's offline, and both runners advance to second and third. The Cardinals lead it on Edmonds' RBI. That's number 14 on the season. Good start for St. Louis. Mondesi missed the cut as well, Al, so both runners advance. Yeah, it's Mondesi at one time had a cannon out there and terrific. This one, the ball is up. See, that's where you're going to go after that first pitch if the ball's up. And next time just takes off. He saw it got by the, the infielder, worried about a 
line drive, throw way off line, but Okindo has to be very aggressive. Good piece of hitting there, and you know, as we said, a lot of times the excellent pitchers will struggle a little bit in the first inning. Once they get settled in, then it's Katie bar the door. Scott rolling one out. Boy, a base hit would be big here. Cardinals, the champions of the National League, taking on this Braves team that we talked about over a decade of excellence in the National League. We also mentioned that either Tony La Russa or Bobby Cox, one way or another, has been involved in postseason play every year since 1987. Bobby's dominated in the regular season. Tony has had better record in postseason against head-to-head -head matchups. Roland jammed, fouls it off. And he's in the hole, nothing and two. Mulder's looking forward to this matchup, getting in the batter's box, but he knows he's matched up against his former teammate, but really he has to concentrate on the Braves' offense. It's a career year a season ago for Scott Rowland. Personal best and average on base percentage, home runs, RBIs. Another gold glove hits it sharply up the middle. That's a base hit and an 0-2 mistake. Three to nothing Cardinals. On 0-2, he drilled it up the middle. How about this start? This game is long from over though. But this is what you have to do. Jump out there. 0-2, like you said, the ball's up. Got movement, but it was up in the zone and a nice piece of hitting right there. With two outs, you're going to send that runner from second base and really not even a play. That's five RBIs on the season now for the Cardinal third baseman. Excuse me, one out. And here's Cedeno. That's in the dirt. Our Ford key matchup, as we talked about earlier, against Tim Hudson. Cedeno is six for eight. And we talked about as well, Edmonds, a year ago, hitting that walk-off home run. He got the first RBI tonight and also a run scored already against this right-hander. Cedeno has had the success against Hudson, but Roger told me Hudson got him last season when the A's were playing against the Cardinals in interleague play. Roger was off the bench yesterday with an RBI base hit. Cardinals dropped that game 4-3. Third baseman playing in a little bit. That works to Roger's advantage. Head the count here with two balls and no strikes. Make it 3-0 with Mark Ridzelonic on deck. Not the start that Tim Hudson wanted. Georgia native came here and then they signed a contract to stay right before the season. And that's up and away and another man has reached a one out walk here in the first. So we've seen four hits and a walk in the only out was the strikeout of Pujols. And here comes Leo Mazzoni the pitching coach. He's been along with Bobby Cox for a number of years here in Atlanta. The Mad Rocker. And Leo was disciple of Johnny Sane. They were together in the Braves minor league system. Leo was a little left-handed pitcher. I first saw him in the Giants minor league system. But Leo's a good study. Believes in an awful lot of throwing. These guys believe in a lot of pitching. You know, of, of dominating down and away. That falls into Leo's philosophy. From Leo Mazzoni to Dave Duncan. With his man on the mound tonight, Mark Mulder, watching. Both of them recognized as two of the top pitching coaches in all of baseball. First and second for Gritzelonic. I got to tell you, Al, I smell a hungo maybe with uh, Mark Gritzelonic making history at Bush Stadium this past week. You We're going to find though. out tonight, though, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, I mean, definitely has a leg up. But, you know, Mulder's National League Player of the Week. A lot of competition. Ritzelonic slaps this one the opposite way, and it is fair. Into the corner it goes. Another run will score. Cedeno will be held up at third. Ritzelonic with an RBI double. 
four to nothing Cardinals. It's 10 for 16 Grizzlonic in his last five games. So that's good piece of hitting there. Good luck that it stays fair. How far off the plate he is. And look at the ball just coming right back towards the middle of the plate from the middle in. And it was elevated. That's what the Cardinals want to do. They're going to swing at that pitch if it's up in the zone. Four to nothing Cardinals. Here's Molina. Check swing did not go, says our first base umpire. Molina really struggling, and especially in this situation, two for 21 with runners in scoring position. And he did not have a good at bat at the end of the game no, yesterday. But a lot of people, you know, just don't understand where Tony La Russa trying to build his confidence. Maybe it costs one game, but down the road it would be beneficial. Here's a squeeze. It's butted in the air. Caught by Hudson. What a play. And it's a double play. They step on the bag at third. And the struggles continue for Molina. <laughs> for our Rico starter Mark Mulder tonight for the Cardinals a record of two and one got off to a slow start Al but after that slow start he's been terrific that's right nationally player of the week he was two and oh with a zero ERA allowing just one unearned run on seven hits in his last two starts covering 18 innings keep the ball down this end of the top of the first and what a play here by Tim Hudson that gets past him a run will score but Hudson was an all SEC outfielder and MVP his senior year center fielder at Auburn. He's a very good athlete and made a terrific athletic play there. And here's for Kyle looking at a strike from Mulder. Four to nothing Cardinals. Now let's see how Mark fares. Cardinals scored more runs off of Hudson in that first inning than the National League has in his first four starts. That's strike two from Mark Mulder. An epic classic battle that we saw over the weekend at Bush Stadium. Mulder against Clemens. And Mulder pitched 10 shutout innings. First time we've seen that since 1989. The last to do it, Jose De Leon. You have to be quick with Fercal. Good Zalonic is. And the first man is retired. Keep him off the bases. This lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. A good one for Kyle Giles and Jordan here in the first. Julio Franco is the cleanup man the ageless wonder Andrew Jones the center fielder then Estrada very good offensive season a year ago Raul Mondesi Wilson Betamit and then Tim Hudson here's Giles Marcus Giles of course his brother plays in San Diego Marcus arrived a couple of seasons ago and is a very good player in the last 12 days he's been hot 364 average raising his average from 154 to 316. 2 0 pitch. Tap foul. One thing we've noticed about Mark Mulder, as opposed from his first couple of starts out to now, everything just seems to be below the knees. I mean, everything is low in the zone. So many ground balls, not many pop ups, not many hard hit balls. Except right there, that's up the middle for a base hit. A one-out hit up the middle by Marcus Giles. Auto tire defense behind Mulder tonight. Sedanio, Edmonds, and Walker in the outfield. Roland Eckstein, Gritzelonic, and Pujols on the infield. And Molina's behind the plate. The auto tire defense. Mulder's getting the ground ball here. And almost, uh, you know, he's, he's so thin for 6'6". Six, six. In this case, maybe a good thing he didn't have a wide backside. Here's Brian Jordan. 38 years of age, the former Cardinal, six seasons with St. Louis. Injuries, a big part of his career. Last year, limited to just 68 games for the Rangers. And he only hit 222. And Bobby Cox is hoping that Jordan, along with Mondesi, regain what they had before in their careers. High fly ball into center. Edmonds is back. He's at the wall and he's got it. Jimmy's got it. Back to first goes Marcus Giles. A long fly ball off the bat of Brian Jordan. This is a bigger ballpark than Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, which was known as the launching pad. And 
if you're the base runner on this high towering ball like that, you can kind of keep on going. And he got to second base, didn't round it, but got back ahead of the throw. For youngsters out there watching that, if he would have rounded it, you got to go back and touch second. Sometimes you'll see guys take across the diamond. Retrace your steps. And two outs, and here's a cleanup man at the age of 46, Julio Franco. He'll be 47 in August and still putting up very productive numbers. I mean, think about how he wraps the bat in this stance that he has and still with authority putting up good numbers. Your numbers there. First pitch a little low by Mulder. And that's ball one. Franco hitting 250, no homers and two RBIs. Adam LaRoche, the first baseman as well. Those two split time. He just moved past Ozzie Smith on the all-time hit list for 87th place. 2-0. Second oldest player in Major League history to hit a home run. The oldest was a pitcher, Jack Quinn. And I'm sure he'll hit one this year and pass uh, Mr. Quinn. Also shattered Pete Rose's record for RBIs by a player 45 years or older. At 57 a year ago. Prior to that, Pete Rose back in 86 at 25 ribbies. That's it. And when you say shattered, he certainly shattered that record. He doubled it. 57. Had a very good spring. Was second on the Braves uh, in RBIs. Andrew Jones on deck. Two balls, one strike. Up the middle, another hard hit ball into center field. Three hard hit balls here in this first inning. You wonder, Al, both these teams, and in particular both these pitchers, because of the hype surrounding this game, just get that first inning under your belt, then settle in. Yeah, that frequently happens with outstanding pitchers. Is sometimes you survive that first inning, then you can get in that groove, get acclimated to the mound, and you find your release point, and then it's uh, zeros upon zeros. And then a lot of times, like I say, you get marquee matchups and they don't materialize. Sure. Well, here's a guy that had an unbelievable spring. You don't put a lot of stock into what veterans do during spring sometimes. And really for that fact, to any player. Ten home runs, hit 413 in the spring. Right now he's hitting 207. Well, a week ago, he... Got a base hit and snapped his longest hitless streak of his career, 0 for 28. And time is called. And Bobby Cox was, you know, both these clubs offensively have gotten off the slow starts. And Bobby Cox says, wait a minute, we've faced some of the best pitching in all of baseball. So it will come around, but the pitchers have been a little ahead of them. Three. Must not have had a good handle on this. Breaking ball, trying to throw behind. He throws right into the ground. Grizzlonic tried to knock it down. A catcher's pet peeve is where a ball like this that's thrown directly to center field, a lot of these catchers can't understand why that center fielder doesn't react until the ball isn't thrown beyond the base. And if it's not deflected one way or the other, they think that that center fielder charges. He should keep the runner from going from advance in this case two of them advance could be a costly error allowing both runners to advance to second and third so a base hit could cut the lead in half let's see if Mulder can pitch out of this jam Andrew Jones with a count of two balls in one strike Jones a season ago Good numbers, not great. Hit 261, 29 homers, 91 RBIs. And he went through very hot spells, cold spells, up and down. Very streaky. He's also a strikeout guy. He set a club record, 147 strikeouts last year. Can Mulder come back to get him? 
will count. One thing we do know about Jones and Edmonds, two of the best defensive center fielders in the game of baseball. They both own seven gold gloves. It's almost as if you just give those guys a gold glove and then figure out who the third is. Just hand it to him right now. Here's a 3-2. Pulled to short. Into left. Cedeno's throw is cut off, and it's 4-2. The throwing here by Molina comes back to haunt the Cardinals. But a tough night for him already here in the first as he butted that squeeze play into the air. That cost the Cardinals with a double play. He throws one into center field. Runners advance, and now the base hit with two outs makes it a 4-2 game. Moeller gets the ground ball, but it's hit sharply and beyond the glove. Pitches up right out there. Lucky it's just a, a single into the hole, and then it took a little tricky hop at the end. And because of that throwing error, it moves everybody up, gives them a second run. And now it's Johnny Estrada. No slouch here at the plate. Very good hitting catcher. Chops it towards second. Rutzelanek avoids the base runner, throws over to Pujols. The Braves strand a man, but they cut the lead in half. After one inning, a pitcher's duel. It's 4-2. The Cardinals lead the Central early on by three and a half games over the Cubs. And St. Louis and Chicago, the only two teams above the 500 mark in the Central. We'll see the Reds on Monday night. They're four and a half back. The Pirates six, along with Milwaukee six back. And the Astros six and a half games out. And what a matchup tonight at Minute Maid Park. It'll be... Roger Clemens, a 300-plus game winner, trying to move past lefty Steve Carlton on the all-time wins list at 330. He'll go against Greg Maddox. A pair of 300-game winners matching up, and we've got a good pitcher's duel here, or so we think. <laughs> Mark Mulder and Tim Hudson. They thought that this would be the hardest part of this game on both sides. These two guys hitting against each other. They're very good friends, former teammates. And having some fun with each other at the plate. Two pranksters that uh, have a oh, unwritten code that they don't do anything against each other. Just attack everybody else. One ball, one strike. Mulder grounds it right side. Franco is there. Flips. And that's the first out. Those two having a laugh on the field near first base. Marquee matchups. How about this action across Major League Baseball? Mulder Hudson tonight, Maddox Clemens tonight, Roy Halladay, and Randy Johnson. Halladay, Cy Young Award winner a couple of years ago. Randy Johnson has won multiple Cy Young Awards for the struggling Yankees now. Great pitching in Major League Baseball tonight. Back to the top of the order here in the second, David Eckstein. Eckstein rips it, pulls it foul. He singled and scored back in the first as the Cardinals played it four. Walker on deck. He broke an 0 for 9 streak for Eckstein. These two faced each other a bunch in the American League West Division. First four starts. There you see what he's done. Yeah. And then tonight, yeah, three earned runs and 28 innings, and Cardinals have outslugged the National League. One ball, one strike on David Eckstein. If you get at Hudson at home, you're doing something. He ranks just ahead of Mulder for the best home winning percentage in baseball history with a minimum of 75 home starts. Hudson is 47 and 15. 47 and 15. As you said, Mulder not uh, far behind that. That duo combined for 173 wins together in Oakland in five seasons. Hudson out of Columbus, Georgia, traded away by Billy Bean. They knew in Oakland they would not be able to re-sign him after this year, so he comes to Atlanta. And John Sherholtz, the GM, was facing an ultimatum. 
as that is hit to second, two down. They had to get him signed before the end of spring training. They did that with a four-year, $47 million deal. Well, I think uh, Hudson played his cards right by, now you see John Scherholtz, the general manager, and a big part of success here, a tandem of Scherholtz and Cox, just like Walt Jockney and Tony La Russa. But, you know, after he lost J.D. Drew, the big trade with the Cardinals, and then Drew walks after a year, he didn't want that to happen. So Hudson was in pretty good uh, negotiating stance. John Sherholtz also saying that they wanted to get back to where they were in the 90s. Not so much focusing on the offense, but focusing on pitching number one, defense, and then the offense. As J.D. Drew left for $55 million to go play with the Dodgers. A ball and a strike on Walker. He butted his way on first time up. Asked Larry how he likes hitting in this ballpark, and he said he doesn't really see the ball well here. He didn't, does not think the lights are that effective. And Larry was not available yesterday after taking a, an injection. He's got a little nerve problem in his neck that uh, is bothering his shoulder. Down to two balls, two strikes. Inside corner, they got Walker looking. So one, two, three inning for Tim Hudson. Mondesi, Betterman, and Hudson coming up. Chevy's Cardinals Crew Kids Club features Jeff Supine this season. For only $20, members receive over $70 worth of great stuff, including three tickets to Cardinals games, a free kids meal at Chevy's Fresh Mex, and great Cardinals gifts and more. STOCardinals.com or 4213060, the Cardinals number to call. Albert Pujols in foul territory, retires Raul Mondesi on one pitch. That's how we start the bottom of the second with the Cardinals leading by the score of 4 to 2. Well, Hudson settled down in the second. Let's see if Mulder can't do the same. Still, a lot of these pitches are kind of up in the zone. This is the third baseman, Wilson. Betterment, and you might remember his name from a couple of the seasons ago. This was supposed to be a can't-miss prospect in Major League Baseball, whether it be with the Braves or whoever. But it's taken him a while to get to the Major Leagues. He's playing tonight because Chipper Jones is out with a bruised left foot. He injured that on Sunday. He injured it trying to score and eventually did against New York. Stepping on the bag, landed kind of in an odd position and crossed the plate, ran down the steps of the dugout. We haven't seen him since. And kind of a severe bone bruise. That's unfortunate for the Braves. Chipper has been one of the bright spots offensively, off to a great start. Benamit getting playing time and it's helping him you know, getting a chance to play every day or at least the last uh, this week. The 1-2 is right down the middle. He couldn't pull the trigger. And a strikeout for Mulder. His first tonight. And Mark's not a strikeout pitcher. Hudson is more of one. But he tries to get guys to put the ball in play early. And that's why he went 10 innings the last time out. Because he only threw 101 pitches through 10. And now it's Tim Hudson against Mulder. And Mulder grounded to first. His first time up. First pitch is in there for a strike. Hudson told John Mabry prior to the game, make sure you tell the big lefty I'm taking him deep tonight during batting practice. No balls and two strikes. Not with that swing. Looking at that swing, you wouldn't think that this guy was all SEC, but he was. His senior year, 18 homers and 95 RBIs. And when he did that, wow, he throws the bat into the seats. Got that guy, the gentleman in the hand, but he seems to be okay. And Mulder has his third strikeout. Check that, his second. Due up for the Cardinals, Albert Pujols, followed by Edmonds. And then we'll see Scott Rowland. And here is Albert Pujols. 
Top of the third, Cardinals up 4-2. Pujols, Edmonds, and Rowland against Tim Hudson. He settled down after a shaky first inning. One of his bright spots in that first was striking out Albert Pujols with two runners on. Hudson with two strikeouts so far in this game. Albert falls behind, nothing in two. Albert Pujols, the youngest of 11 children. Born in the Dominican, moved to New York, then moved to Kansas City, just outside of Kansas City. Independence, Missouri. Played at Fort Osage High School. They won a state title back in 97. Maple Woods Community College, and the Cardinals picked him up. He was a shortstop in junior college. We were talking yesterday about how good his throwing arm is at first base. And the one year he played in the minor league was at third base for Peoria. And he was rated as the best infield arm in the league. Reaches for that one, chops it to Hudson. He'll settle and throw. Pujol is retired as he trots down the first base line. Thursday, it's a special live presentation of the best damn light heavyweight fight period sponsored by Kingdom of Heaven. As two former champions meet in a title eliminator bout, Montel Ice Griffin takes on Julio Cesar Gonzalez as both men try to move one step closer to regaining the title. And here's Jim Edmonds, 4-2 St. Louis. Fastball and a strike with one on, nobody on. You know how rare that base hit for Edmonds was here at Turner Field? He has a career mark, 16 games coming in, 125 average. One ball, one strike. Edmonds, RBI base hit. Back in the first. Also scored a run. Takes a ball outside. Two and one. Throw enough pitches in to keep these guys honest, but he, he kind of lives on that outside part of the plate. Three balls and a strike. Got underneath that one, didn't stay on top of it. Now you look at Hudson. When he signed out of college, he was only 160 pounds and scouts stayed away from him, thinking he was not big enough. Another case, though, where you just don't measure a guy, his heart and his willingness and desire, competitiveness to win at this level. Well, you know, that's why he's so good, because things like that have driven him to succeed. And it's the second walk handed out by Hudson tonight. One of the best competitors you'll, you'll find. One of the things the Cardinals felt they could do is run against Hudson, too. Back in 2000, there were 27 attempts to steal against Hudson, and 24 of those were successful. As he checks on Edmonds over at first. Memory serves me right. Didn't uh, Cardinals really take advantage of Estrada's throwing a year ago? Yeah. The Cardinals won four of six against Atlanta last year. And he's in an era where they don't often uh, steal. He's already had uh, 18 attempts against Estrada. Oh! A strike to Scott Rowland. He had a base hit up the middle and an RBI run scored back in the first. Cardinals got their runs in the first, lead it 4 2. Cards have out hit the Braves 5 3 so far. Rolling well hit into right center field. That'll hang up, though, for Andrew Jones. The gold glover puts it away. So smooth out there. Two down. And it brings in the switch hitting Roger Cedeno, who walked back in the first. As Roger, if he knows why he hits Hudson. He said, I just look for a pitch I can see. 
isn't it amazing some of the numbers that he has against some of the best pitchers in baseball remember he starts against Clemens because his numbers like that two outs in the first pitch just inside Roger Tay is like when he played every day he felt like he could compete against the best and, and did and competed well. Another check on the runner at first to Edmonds. Sedeno, of course, came up with the Dodgers back in 95. Was with the Mets, the Astros, the Tigers. And now in a second season with the Cardinals. Hudson pretty occupied with Edmonds over at first. You talked about it. Yeah. People try to steal against him. Here comes a 1 0. Rogers slaps it foul into the Cardinal dugout almost. Right over the top of the dugout. Into like the first row. One ball, one strike. Sedano got some relief last year by Walt Jackety and the Cardinals when they got him out of New York. That was a tough situation for Roger. I remember, I remember one media person in New York said that they wanted to give the general manager of the Mets uh, executive of the year just by making the trade, <laughs> finding somebody to take Roger. And, and you know what? He's got a great personality, fits very well in this clubhouse. And, and if you watch him interact with other teammates that he's had in the past, they all love him. 1-1 one, one pitch. Foul back. People forget Cedeno was once the heir apparent to Brett Butler as the Dodgers leadoff hitter and center fielder. And, and I saw where Butler's with uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks coaching. Can't wait to see Brett. Completely different look with Arizona this year. Yeah. Russ Ortiz, Troy Glaus, Jeff Morad is now taking over that team power agent to a powerful man with that organization. You know, Will Clark you know, had uh, Jeff as an as an agent. Now he's working for the Diamondbacks and special assistant also uh, Matt Williams. Here's the one two. Cedeno chops it to Giles flips to Franco. Cardinal strand a man. They've left two tonight. Bottom of the third, top of the order due up for Atlanta. Get to the ballpark with half price nights on select dates this year. All fans can purchase terrace reserved and upper terrace seats for half price Thursday, May 5th, San Diego in town. That's the next half price night. You can get terrace reserved seats for just $9.50 or upper terrace for $4.50. That's it. 421-2400 or stlcardinals.com for ticket information. Here's Rafael Fercal, the leadoff man for Atlanta. And we're underway here in the bottom of the third. Cardinals leading by the score of four to two. For Kyle is a guy you got to keep off the bases. He is first right now in the National League and steals. And he chops this one to short. Eckstein has to be quick, and he is. Good play. Very good play by David Eckstein. Come in on that slow roller. Got to make it very quick exchange. Throw on the run, and he does it with plenty to spare. And it brings in Marcus Giles. As you noted earlier, Al, this is one of their hottest bats right now in this lineup. He's had two hits in seven of the last 11 games, multi-hit games. And he drills this one into right center field. On the move is Walker. He won't get it. One hopper off the wall. Giles is on his way to second base. And it's a one-out stand-up double. Giles is two for two. Let's check in with Joe Goldberg. Yeah, guys out beyond left field, which of course is Brian Jordan's domain. He said he would love to end his career either in St. Louis or here in Atlanta. He said St. Louis holds a special place in his heart. He will be back, of course, August 5th, 6th, and 7th when the Braves come to town, his last ever series at Bush Stadium. Guys. Brian Jordan, of course, was with St. Louis six seasons. 
But as Joel noted during the pregame show in his interview, Brian remembers that old turf at Bush Stadium quite well. He said it's going to be sad for him to see Bush Stadium torn down, the new stadium going up in St. Louis. I wasn't trying to retire him, but I already asked him about coming to the Legends camp. <laughs> How did he take that? <laughs> So him Ray Lankford's coming this year, and I even talked to Ronnie Gant about it. Uh-oh. That's in a deep left field, and that ball is gone. Way out of here. Two-run home run for Brian Jordan, his second, and it's a 4-4 game. No doubt about that one. Long fly ball, only the second home run allowed by Mulder. He doesn't give up many, but an indication that he's not getting the ball down. And up in the wheelhouse, and he spun away from it. He knew exactly where that was going to end. But PJ trying to make a statement saying, Bring me home. That's the second time he has hit a ball deep off of Mulder. This one gets over the wall. The first time was center field. He hit it to the wall. Now it's Franco singled and scored back in the first. Another pitch that's up for a ball. And here's another look at the home run by Jordan. And middle half in, up, and he just turned on it. Right back into the runway. Second home run of the year, but RBI is up to 14. And a great smile and Saw a little hug from Tim Hudson. New life. Get him back even. Was four to nothing. Now four four. Two balls and no strikes on Franco. Good pitch. Andrew Jones on deck. He has an RBI single that played it two to get Atlanta on the board. Now the two run homer by Brian Jordan. Franco has said he'd like to play till at least 50. In the center, that'll carry out to Edmonds. Two down. Terry Pendleton, the hitting coach for Bobby Cox and Atlanta Braves, said he'll hit and be successful as long as his eyes stay good. He's amazing that he's played as long as he has and done his success. successful. It really is. I mean, he's a cleanup hitter at 46 years of age. He's not a DH. He has to play in the field at first base. Third ball in the dirt to Andrew Jones. RBI single first time up. Amazing story of Julio Franco. Remember when he was with Philly? with a bunch of places. Well, he's with Philly. He was a shortstop when he first yeah, got to the when, big leagues. When he got to the big leagues, he was with Philadelphia, and then that six-player trade with uh, Von Hayes and the Cleveland Indians really opened up the door for his playing time. Pat Corrales, the bench coach for the uh, Padres. There's Pat right next to him as uh, his manager in Cleveland. That's a strike on the outside corner. There might not be a smoother fielder in the game of baseball than the man at the plate, Andrew Jones. He's got very good power. Tremendous athlete. Now he draws a walk. And this is not the same Mark Mulder we saw over the weekend. First walk he is allowed. And with two down, it's Johnny Estrada hitting 233 coming into play tonight. Looking for his first home run. Nine RBIs on the season. The Silver Slugger Award winner a season ago. Two outs. Jones at first. And a check on Andrew. Bobby Cox, they say Al is a player's manager. Will not embarrass you, but Andrew Jones, remember this back in 98 when he loafed on a liner. Bobby Cox went out middle of the game and pulled him from center field. Make sure he got his message across. 
They picked off Jones. He's in the hot box. Who holds is there? He'll tag him out. And we head to the fourth. Brian Jordan, the former Cardinal, has tied it up. He's back in Atlanta. A two-run shot, 4-4. Four -four. Second baseman, Mark Rizalonic, will lead things off for the Cardinals here in the top of the fourth. A 4-4 game. Glad you're with us here on FSM Midwest. Joe Goldberg, Al Rabosky, Dan McLaughlin, our Bud Sports crew. Game one of a six-game road trip for St. Louis. Three in Atlanta, three in Cincinnati, then back home. Oh, one pitch in the dirt, one and one. Jose Okendo, of course, the secret weapon. Remember when he pitched, he was on the mound at Bush Stadium. It was against these Atlanta Braves. He went uh, three to four innings in that game, extra innings, and held them scoreless. He did become a position player that lost the ball game to Rick Mailer. Mailer said it was the most pressure he's ever pitched under. Knowing that he was in a tie game, being opposed by a position player. Count of three balls and a strike. A home run by Brian Jordan, 430 feet. Strike on the outside corner. And the count is full on Gritzelonic. He lived down the zone a lot of times away. And he shoots that one fair. Pass Franco. Gritzelonic is thinking too. Mondesi the throw to second. Safe at second. Gritzelonic, his second double. He's two for two. This portion of Cardinal Baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. We're ready in advance. By Affleck. Ask about it at work. And by Rico. How well do you print, copy, scan, fax? How well do you share? Grigelonic has been on fires of late. The cycle the other day. And he's two for two with a pair of doubles tonight. 11 for his last 17. Five games. Molina been hitting with more of an open stance, trying to Cal McRae trying to give him a better look. Both corners charging on the number eight man in this lineup. You out of your Molina. Ask him on the first pitch to sacrifice. Now that they're charging and everything, maybe he'll switch off. But the one thing that Hal McRae the other day. He said, I got tired of seeing what I was seeing from Molina. And we went and worked on a day game to try and give him a more comfortable stance. One and one is the count. Molina popped it up his first time up, trying to complete the bunting phase of the squeeze play and popped it up into a double play. And Al McRae thinks once he stops chasing bad pitches, and he's, he says he's very, very coachable. He's very, very smart. Understands an awful lot. He thinks he'll be all right as long as he doesn't chase pitches out of the strike zone. Looks at a ball, two and one. Your number eight man with Mulder on deck, and you're trying to bunt with him. Now it just kind of tells you something. It sure does. But how, you know, because Mulder's still looking for his first hit. But. Now will tell you that he never has to explain anything to Molina. So he's very intelligent, really has a good idea. Now he's having ever a tough time reading the signs from Mokindo. Ask him a couple times to go back through the set. A 4-4 game here in the top of the fourth. Molina will square early on with the pitcher on deck. Now he pulls it back. Let's see what he wants to do. Looked like he was getting ready to show it again. Yeah, you could really tell there. That was one of the spin move back there. Sometimes it's called from the bench as everyone will watch the hitter and see if he gives it away. And he did show bunt. He squares the 2-1 pitch. 
There's a strike. Two and two. Well, he's really struggling. Need a couple positive things to happen. Just kind of get the monkey off his back. Wonder if he's starting to take some of his offense to back behind the plate, throwing that ball away tonight. That's very uncharacteristic. Count is even, two balls, two strikes. Ground ball right side. Good job by Molina, moving the runner over. So runner at third and a chance for Mulder to help himself. We've talked an awful lot about the pitching matchup. How about the managerial matchup tonight with Bobby Cox. 2000 plus wins. Nice round of uh, handshakes for Molina. And then card skipper Tony La Russa. Back in 2003 he got over 2000 wins. And they're both uh, one and two and in wins active managers and fifth and eighth on the all time list infield is in for Mulder matter of fact Al this is the first time since 1950 that a pair of 2000 win managers have faced off in the same game see who they were Joe McCarthy and Connie Mack yeah, one Pretty and two good. one and two How about uh, 3000 plus wins for Connie Mack of course he owned the ball club and but he stopped managing about 78. 87. 87. I knew it was one. 87. Dyslexic gets yeah. me again. Just flip it around. He had 3,731 wins in over 7,700 games. Well, the season's over. Tony will move up to third on the list, and he'll pass his good friend that has really been uh, kind of a mentor to both these managers, and that's Sparky Anderson. And both these guys have done it a little differently, Bobby Cox and Tony La Russa, but the common theme has been good players and good organizations, good spots to be. As Mulder shoots it to the opposite field. Bartman. I'm telling you, it's Bartman down there. Except Jordan didn't throw his glove down like Moises Alou. And he didn't, didn't hand it to... <laughs> Moises didn't hand it to Bartman either. In a way, that might help out Hudson because yeah, Mulder he would have easily, scored. Right. He, you could strike out Mulder. And that was deep enough to score the runner from third. Could have walked home. And a 1 1 pitch. Nasty tailing action. Mark his first time up, grounded it to first. With Hudson covering. Can't help himself. Swing and a miss. Let's check in with Joel again. Well, guys, no one other than Mark Mulder knows Tim Hudson on the Cardinals better than except uh, David Eckstein. Eckstein, 50 career at bats against him. His first ever career home run in the majors was against Hudson, and they actually faced each other once in college, Florida against Auburn. Eckstein went one for three in that game. He said it was just a jam shot, but they did win the game. He also said that Hudson was the best hitter on that Auburn team, guys. Well, I mentioned it before. Thank you, Joel. 396, 18 homers, 95 RBIs for Hudson that senior year. When he was the player of the year in the conference, he actually broke Frank Thomas's school record for RBIs. And now he's matched up here with Eckstein. A lot of good college hitters don't make the grade. And I think he picked the right end of baseball pitching. Eckstein, ground ball, Giles. He saves a run. Great play by the Braves second baseman. Eckstein, one for three. Midway through four here in Atlanta. We're tied 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four game, bottom of the fourth. We turn to the Aflac trivia question. Name the pitcher who owns the Cardinals' rookie record for the most appearances. As Estrada looks at a high strike from Mark Mulder. I know that one. As do I. He just confirmed it.
Cardinals have out hit the Braves 6 5. Estrada, Mondesi, and Betterman. Hit into right, that'll hang up there for Walker for the first out. Remember John Rocker, of course, Al. He's now playing in the Independent League in all places New York, but Rocker helped out St. Louis, and Larry Walker saw it in 2000 when he allowed a home run to Todd Helton. And that gave the Cardinals home field advantage in the playoffs in the National League. The final day of the season between Colorado and Atlanta. It makes you think about all the different closers that Bobby Cox has used during this tremendous run. Alejandro Pena, Mark Walters, Rocker, Smoltz, Kolb. Next time makes the play. And they have some issues with their closer right now. Yeah, they do. Uh, Danny Cobb the other day faced six batters, gave up five hits, had to be removed with two outs in the ninth inning. And really, uh, they said he's trying to be the classic closer, trying to blow people away. They acquired him because he had a mid 90s sinker. They got ground balls, but now he's trying to be a strikeout pitcher. Let's see if Mulder can't settle in here in the fourth. He's got the first two. Benjamin struck out looking. But a fastball right down the middle his first time up. Average at 214. And it's quickly 2 0. Cardinals will have in the fifth, 2 3 and 4 in their order. Walker, Pujols, and Edmonds. Tim Hudson is settled in after a shaky start. Atlanta got two runs in the first and an RBI single by Andrew Jones and then a two run home run by former Cardinal Brian Jordan to tie it up at four. Back to Mulder. He hit it. Slowed it down for Grutzelanek over to Pujols. Mark Mulder a one two three bottom of the fourth. The big boys coming up for St. Louis on FSN Midwest. Walker Pujols and Edmonds. We're tied at four. The question named the pitcher who owns the Cardinals rookie record for the most appearances. And our answer to the Affleck trivia question Mike Perez in 1992 77 games for St. Louis. The scoreboard here in Atlanta is just amazing 70 feet high and it's presented in high definition. The clarity is just remarkable as Walker will lead things off here in the fifth clarity color you know just the, the size of it. It's outstanding all the things they can do with that. That is the best I've ever seen period. Walker to the opposite field that's extra bases. Lead off double for Walker the Cardinals had a lead off walk. A leadoff double back in the fourth inning. And a leadoff double here in the fifth. Ball up and he hammers it to the opposite field, slice away from the outfielders, and knows he's got extra bases. Full Glover Andre Jones out there. You're not gonna and the way Brian Jordan hustles after balls, you're not gonna get more than two. Would you agree, Albert Pujols, who's getting set to face Tim Hudson has not looked comfortable in his first two at bats. Exactly. But really rare because he's a 400 average with five home runs, 13 RBIs, and 12 games here at Turner coming in. And of late, he's hit just under 400 in his last nine games. A little bunch of RBIs. Outfield is straight away for Pujols and deep, and he hits this one into deep right center field. Get going. Home! run for Albert Pujols six to four Cardinals. That's the Albert we know. He smoked it into right center field. You know it seems like been out. You know too much movement not waiting back and so it's good to see him hit it to the opposite field. Ball up and away and he is so strong head doesn't move a bit and he just uses that 
downward stroke to hit that line drive into right center about 415. And now it's Edmonds. A double, a homer, 6-4 Cardinals. We say it all the time. There might not be a better hitter as far as making adjustments pitch to pitch at bat to at bat. You know, guys do it from day to day, but not within the game, as well as Albert Pujols. You know, you take these last two at bats in yesterday's game, the first two here, uh, that was probably as frustrating of the bats as he's had in a long time. Tied up by Batalico in his second to last at bat and then popped up in the final at bat. Edmonds hits it sharply to first. Franco is there. That's out number one here in the fifth. So the Cardinals got four against Hudson in the first inning and now a two run home run by Pujols here in the fifth. And it brings in Scott Rowland. Chicago leading Houston two to one. That game is early. 634 wins and 11 Cy Youngs combined with Maddox and Roger Clemens. 80 pitches now for Hudson and not a good ratio. 48 strikes, 32 balls. And a 1-0 pitch. Third baseman makes the play, two down. Well, tomorrow, FSN Midwest presents the Big 12 Spring Football Tour. Fans get an all-access inside look into Big 12 school football programs. The tour starts tomorrow, 5.30, exclusively on FSN Midwest. Did you work on that? I did the University of Missouri. Went down for their spring football program and uh, their spring day. They got a pretty good quarterback. Going to be okay? They're going to be pretty good. Brad Smith coming back for his senior season. He was hyped prior to his junior year as a Heisman hopeful. Didn't work out. Tigers on the rebound in 05. Matter of fact, Mario Mocha and Mike Alden, the athletic director and associate athletic director of the University of Missouri, are here at the ball game tonight. Two outs, a ball and a strike. On the switch hitting Roger Cedeno. Roger hitting 182. And tonight, Cedeno has walked and then grounded to second. Who holes has put the Cardinals on top 6 4. Good pitching pairings all weekend long. John Thompson and Matt Morris tomorrow. Fastball misses in. Then Jeff Supon, he just gets another easy start against John Smoltz. He's had Ben Sheets, Carlos Zimbrano, and now Supon will get John Smoltz on Sunday. And other than opening day for Smoltz, he's pitched very well in his return to starting. Broken bat. Giles bare hands. And the ball gets away, and so Daniel's going to stay put at first. He didn't realize that the ball had gotten away. Hustling down the line, a base hit for Cedeno. Tough play for the second baseman. One, to figure out to barehand or not. But two, you don't want to handcuff your first baseman with a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. Get it in your, kind of reach in there deep and get it into your hand. And then, you know, let it roll to your fingertips. It's a lot of two for two with a pair of doubles down the right field line. He'll dig in with two outs and a man at first. He scored an error. Tough play. I'll say so. See if Sedania wants to do some running. That's a do or die play. They give him an error. Assist to Giles. E3 they scored. So Franco gets the air. So that's why Giles gets the assist. Earlier in his career, Sedania was a threat to steal numerous bases when he was playing every day. Still good speed over at first. 
First pitch was a strike to Grudzelanek. Another check. Like Roger may have been leaning. Now you've got a guy that can handle the bat and really, you know, you if you ask him to hit behind a runner, that is a strength for Grizzolani. Big lead at first for Cedeno. He's off and running. And the pitch is hit foul out of play. Count of no balls, two strikes. Grudzelanek with 23 hits to start his season, and six of those have been a double. So he does have a triple and a homer. The oddity yesterday was the first game that he got a hit in that the Cardinals did not win. We knew this guy was a doubles machine coming into play for St. Louis a few years ago. Had over 50. Late 90s with Montreal. We're in the fifth, and the Cardinals lead it six to four. Gritzelonic trying to extend it to Molina, who's on deck. No balls and two strikes. Pitch out and undoing. Sedano read that. Good base dealers, they will detect a little different motion. On a pitch out, the pitcher a lot of times will slow up and they just see the difference in the releasing when you're throwing a good pitch to the plate or when you're pitching out where you ease up and they can detect that and he stopped his forward progress. Big lead at first. Got him now. Yep. And Cedeno is tagged out by Fracal. Slams his helmet in disgust. <laughs> Albert Pujols with a two-run home run. His sixth on the year. RBIs number 17 and 18. Six four cards. Matt Morris will make his third start of the season tomorrow. His ninth career start against Atlanta. He's one in five against the Braves. That's your Budweiser. What's on tap? That'll be on WB11. John Thompson will go for the Braves. And this is Tim Hudson. In the Braves half of the fifth. Cardinals on top. Six four. Back to Mulder. Broke his bat. And Hudson is 0 for 2. Top of the order, Rafael Fercal, and then Marcus Giles. Three ground balls in a row, and that's a good sign for Mulder. He's seen his ERA climb to 351 from 310. And Hudson has seen his go from 0 0.96, 0 0.96 to 2.48. Here's Fercal, the shortstop for Atlanta. Joe and Bunt looks at a strike. You can make a case with Renteria gone out of the National League that this guy is the best shortstop in the league. As Turris is another one that would be uh, highly thought of. Good pitch by Mulder. Took a lot off it. 0 oh 2. You watch for Kyle throw. It reminds me of Sean Dunstan. Remember his arm when he first came up, how yes. explosive it was? I remember the old saying was somebody asked how could uh, another curveball hit up the middle for a base hit on an 0-2 mistake. How could the Chicago draft uh, Dunstan over uh, Doc Good? And Whitey's response was, well, Dunstan's got a better arm. <laughs> and he may have. It's yeah. like watching uh, Roland throw from third base that thing's coming over 95 miles an hour. Here's Giles. He's had a good day. Two for two at the plate. Saved a run in the field. With a diving stop. Jordan on deck. He has a two run homer. Pitch just missed inside. Giles two runs scored with a single and a double. Tied it up in Houston 2 2 in the fourth inning. That one may be a little more scoring than what you thought early going. The 1-0 pitch. Bought off and fouled. Jam shot. 1-1. One one. Giles had a broken collarbone in May last year. That really cost him. Two months were gone. 
was shaping up to be his best offensive year. Still finished with very good numbers. Hit 311. 18 homers, 48 RBIs. Mixed in 17 stolen bases. Right there is your league leader in stole, uh, stolen bases. Seven on the season along with Bobby Abreu of Philadelphia and Omar Vizquel at the age of 36 for the Giants. In the last two, day, uh, two years, Giles has hit 314 combined. And for Kyle. Gets away. For Kyle will easily move up into scoring position. Wild pitch there. Not much Molina could do there. No. It's really tough on. Seems like it's tougher to block those balls in the dirt from a left hander. Usually when it's a breaking ball, you just don't know where it's going to. Where it's going to bounce, which way direction, and especially when it's at the feet of the batter. Count of two balls and one strike. Up the middle, that's a base hit for Kyle will test Edmonds. The gold glover to the plate. For Kyle is safe, 6-5. Jim Edmonds made it close, and because his throw was at such a low trajectory, Giles, the hitter, only stays at first base, right up over the mound, and Jimmy charging hard, comes up firing, low trajectory, gets it all the way there, and for call one of the fastest in the game. And goes around the plate, but Elena didn't catch it cleanly, but because of the low throw, Giles has to stay at first. Pitch count from Mulder. He's thrown 60 so far. Jordan has hit the ball hard twice, including a two-run homer. Pitch misses low. Back-to-back -back singles by Fercal and Giles has cut the lead to 6-5. Not the pitcher's duel we thought it might be. Nope. Uh, 11 runs to this point, 15 hits. One ball, no strikes. And Jordan looks at a ball outside. 2 and 0. Oh. And they're going to go out and slow down Molder. Outfield is deep and straight away for Brian Jordan. Back in his second stint with the Atlanta Braves. It's just been an amazing run. 13 consecutive division titles. But the amazing aspect, Al, is how they have retooled year after year. Yeah, they average about 10 player transactions or 10 players turning over each year. That's the surprising part. Correct but me if I'm wrong. I think Smoltz is the only one left. Yeah, from, from the, the beginning. First. Right. From the initial run, Smoltz he is. 13 times they've been into postseason play in a row now and only one World Championship that was back in 95. Double play ball. Eckstein flips to Grudzelanek. Good turn. Double play. 6 4 3. Atlanta gets a run back. The RBI up the middle by Marcus Giles. We move to the sixth. Grudzelanek, Molina, Mulder coming up. Here's Grudzelanek. He'll lead it off for the Cardinals. As we start playing here in the sixth. St. Louis up six to five. He was batting when Sedanio got picked off. And quickly two and oh. Gritzelonic, a pair of doubles tonight. Hudson hasn't been able to spot his pitches the way he normally does. Two oh pitch. Upstairs for ball three. Of course, Grutzelanek was acquired as a free agent in December from Chicago. Injuries are part of the problem with his tenure in Chicago. Oh! Achilles Hill problem. He platooned with Todd Walker last year. Up the middle, three hit night for Grutzelanek. Well, Tony La Russa, prior to the last half inning, went out and talked to Tim Cheetah, the third base umpire, and I'm sure they're talking about Hudson and what 
was he doing going towards the plate? Was he going towards the plate? Was he blocking? This is to pick off Cedeno. I didn't see anything. Did you? Not really. It's just, you know, kind of, he's got that sort of that stiff front leg, and he looked like he might have uh, had a slight movement. But nothing that was really obvious. Like he may have stopped, started, and then stopped trying to come set before right. delivering. Or of course, you have to be set. You can't do what he did. Trying to bunt again with Molina, with Mark Mulder on deck. Yada years over two. Average is dipped to 141. He's hit into a double play on a squeeze play. Popped it up. And a diving catch by Tim Hudson. They doubled up the runner at third to get out of the first. And then he grounded the second. Second time up. Gets the bunt down of beauty. And Hudson will tag out Molina. For so one four. unassisted. And Gritzelonic moves up to second in scoring position. His teammates very supportive of him trying to encourage him the time he does one little thing but see if Mulder can't get that first hit of the season help himself grounded the first and struck out 0 for 2 Eckstein on deck corners cheating in at third a little bit at first third baseman Wilson Betamed is about two steps in on the grass when the pitch comes Franco is near the bag and near the line at first one oh pitch one and one Sixth inning here at Turner Field in Atlanta. Cardinals lead it six to five. Ninety seven pitches now for Hudson. I don't know how many more he'll deliver tonight. Two and one. It's labored here tonight. Two and two on an inside pitch. Works both sides of the plate. Determined not to let his buddy get his first national league hit. And the two two. Old foul. Good rip. Hudson, his best season was back in 2000. He's been a 20 game winner once and it was that season he was 20 and 6. Well, you know he was the first to get to the major leagues of the big three. He was the first to win 20. And Mulder came up. He won 20. And then Zito and then he won 20. And won a Cy Young. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Mulder rips it into left. Jordan will make the play. Hudson looking at Mulder as he runs off the field. Good play by Jordan on left. That saves a run and a hit. Good base running by Grizzlonic to locate the ball and to be aware that it was going to be caught. Get back to second base. Jordan kind of went right out from underneath. You always worry about him when all the knee problems he's had. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the St. Louis Cardinals LLC and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals LLC. Two outs, a runner at second, and Eckstein will be the hitter. Decision for those two as Hudson has thrown 101 pitches now. 
He's not due up for a while in their lineup. Do you let him go another inning? Well, that's it. He has thrown 114 in that uh, no decision against Houston where he went nine innings, four hits allowed, no runs, one walk, and nine strikeouts. Next time is singled and scored in the first, grounded twice to second. As Giles robbed him of a hit in an RBI last time up. Hudson calls a strut out. And to change the sign for the runner on second base. Hopefully David Eckstein can deliver in this run with the Cardinals up by the score of six to five. Two outs. Here in the top of the sixth. Chokes on the bat, crowds the plate. And Foul ball. fouls it off his foot. Ouch. And you have a guy with that power sinker. Can't stand in the batter's box. They're always worrying about drilling them. Selves fouling the ball off their legs. And a broken bat hit to third. Next time retired. He's one for four. Cardinal strand a man. They have left four on the night. Midway through the sixth. Julio Franco will lead it off for Atlanta, bottom of the sixth. Cardinal fans here in Dixie, a lot of red in the seats. Nice crowd on hand, beautiful night for baseball. In Atlanta, Georgia. Franco, Jones, and Estrada for the Braves. First pitch is a ball. Franco is one for two with a run scored. Ball one strike. The amazing thing about Franco last year he hit 309. That was the best he has ever hit in the major leagues at the age of 46. And he knows a lot about hitting, but still, how many 46 year olds can can do it at this level? He was terrific off the bench. Led their team with 16 pinch hit RBIs. Only made two errors in 84 games. And he strikes out. Good start here for Mulder in the bottom of the sixth. This portion of Cardinal Baseball from Atlanta on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Jack invites you to come in and experience ciabatta. It's all about the bread and by your local Chrysler Jeep dealers. Here's Andrew Jones on base twice tonight. A two out base hit up the middle back in the first to play two. And a walk in the third. He then was picked off. Where's that pitch? 2 and 0. A lot of pitches that have been down in the strike zone over the plate, but must be low. 3 and 0. The strut on deck. Cardinals start play tonight with a record of 14 and 6. Best start since 1982. The Braves are 13 and 9. 3 and 0 a chopper to Scott Rowland strong throw over to first and Jones helps out Mulder we go back to the Franco strikeout to start this inning and this is our hot pitch of the game and it's brought to you by Hardee's Third strikeout for Mulder is seeing rare back 
Throw the breaking ball and off speed pitch down and away and had him swinging over the top beyond his reach. Estrada is grounded to second, fly to right. Hudson is over 100 pitches through six innings, where Mulder will be in the 70s, and he gets through six. Think of the year that Estrada had a season ago, the first switch hitting catcher since 1923 to hit better than 300. He grounds it this time to David Eckstein. Long throw to Pujols. Mulder, a 1-2-3 inning. Six innings in the books. Coming up, Albert has already gone deep tonight. Cardinals up by a run. He's done after over 100 pitches, and the lone lefty in the Atlanta bullpen is John Foster. And if you're going to use him, this would be the time to do it with Walker, left-handed hitter. Then you've got Pujols, and then a left-handed hitting Jim Edmonds. Well, Foster was in the Braves organization, came up to the big leagues in 2002, 2003. He was with the Milwaukee organization, missed all of last year with surgery on his left shoulder, torn labrum. And he was at a ball game, and he was telling some of the Braves players that, hey, I'm going to make a comeback. Contacted the minor league system. They said, yeah, we'll give you a shot. Started the season at Richmond, was recalled on the 14th of April. And on Tuesday, he picked up his first career save, getting Cliff Floyd to pop up with two men on and a one-run lead. He's 26, 6 feet, 200 pounds, and a rope hit by Walker. On a hanging breaking ball, but right at Furcal. Nico Sports is offering a 12 by 14 framed and matted plaque for sale to commemorate the last season of Bush Stadium. An aerial photo of opening day 2005 is highlighted. You can get yours by calling 1 800 345 2868. That's 800 345 2868. Here's Pujols. If this lead holds up, it'll be the game-winning RBIs off the bat of Albert Pujols with a two-run home run back of the fifth to give the Cardinals a 6-4 lead. It's now 6-5. Albert is one for three on the night. And it's two balls and no strikes. Hudson goes six innings, six runs allowed, nine hits, walked two, struck out three, and allowed the home run to Pujols. Albert out in front. Hits it back to the lefty. Two outs. And it brings in Edmonds. Cardinals with no activity in their bullpen. Uh, Mulder's in, you know, in the 70s in his pitch count, so he could maybe go another inning or two. And we should tell. Our fans and Kevin Jarvis has been brought up. Hector Luna has been sent down to Memphis. Good breaking ball by Foster. So the Cardinals have a 12 man pitching staff right now. With all these games in a row, no off days. Tony La Russa wanted to make sure and do that. Luna had options. So that was the move that was made as Edmonds came out of his shoes with that swing. A couple times that Foster's gotten away with breaking balls that really didn't break and left him up in the zone. Sometimes you could throw it above the strike zone and it's just bad enough that it's effective. That was the case with Jimmy there. It's Jeff Jenkins in a Cardinal uniform on that swing before. <laughs> Jimmy a pair of RBIs and a single up the middle back in the first. He's walked and grounded out. Fouls it out of play. Big crowd here at Turner Field. And just a gorgeous, perfect night for baseball in Atlanta. We have avoided the rain. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, but not tomorrow night. We thought we might have some showers tonight, but they have stayed away. And the one-two pitch to Edmonds. He got him. Cardinals go one-two-three here in the top of the seventh. And it's time to stretch in Dixie. Cardinals tickets and participate in the Southwest Airlines family of the game promotion during a Cardinals home game. Here's a chance in your name, address, and phone number to Southwest Airlines family of the game. P.O. Box 771192. 
St. Louis, Missouri, 63177. Good luck from Southwest Airlines. Here's Mondesi. We mentioned before that Mike Alden, along with Mario Mocha of the University of Missouri, are in attendance buying home plate. Big Cardinal fans. Cardinals lead it 6-5. to five. And It's a ball inside, and the count is 2-0. and oh. It'll be Mondesi, Betterman, and a pinch hitter. Remember when Mondesi came up with the Dodgers, rookie of the year in the National League, said he was the best player ever out of the Dominican. Cannon for an arm. Yeah. We're, you know, he had all the tools, and he's had a nice career, but I don't think that, I think that assumption was overinflated, and I think a guy named Albert Pujols might uh, take claim to that uh, title when it's all said and done. Three and one on Mondesi. You mentioned rookies of the year for the Dodgers. Hollinsworth, Mondesi, Hideo Nomo. They had a bunch. Piazza. Piazza. Three and two on Mondesi. Eric Karros. And they had five or six, five or so in a row. Yeah. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Just missed inside. So Mondesi draws a leadoff walk. Not what Mulder wanted to do. And the tying run is on base. Second walk of the evening and not a good way to start the seventh inning. You do have the eighth place hitter. And then it looks like Chipper Jones may be pinch hitting for the pitcher Foster. Betterman has struck out and grounded out. Scott Rowland in on the grass at third base. Of course, they hold it first. He squares, takes a strike. As you mentioned, Al, pitch count is low, so no activity yet in that Cardinal bull bullpen. Now, and Mulder always has the ability to throw a sinking fastball or one of his pitches that it's down in the zone, get a ground ball, turn the two. Wants it in the air, Molina just out of his reach. Great effort, but just a little short. He is diving for it, just beyond his reach. A good effort. Now you've got two strikes on the hitter. Al Reyes has gotten up, starting to throw for the Cardinals in their bullpen. Chipper Jones in the on-deck circle. And one of the reasons maybe you would bring in a right-hander is to try to neutralize Chipper Jones. Well, remember, we were told that Chipper can't swing the bat left-handed. Right. He did take some batting practice left-handed today, but that bad heel is affecting him left-handed. And he can't really run. So it'd be interesting. And I mean, and he still could always be a decoy, too. Chipper is tied with Reggie Smith, fourth all time. Most career home runs by a switch hitter. How about a double play? Four, six, three double play. That is huge. Two outs now here in the seventh. He's gotten a couple of double plays on the ground. Four, six, three on that one. The other back in the fifth. Six, four, three. Well, that's the forte is getting ground balls. We got a man on. You can turn two. Pitcher's best friend, and now Orr is going to pinch hit, pull back Chipper Jones. Cardinals will have a decision with Mark Mulder. He's not due up. He's due up fifth for the Cardinals. Well, hopefully you get down to his spot and score some extra insurance runs. Right. Wouldn't be surprised if he went back out there. Corners are in. Hit hard to Pujols. He can't come up with it. Hard hit ball. Looks like they're going to give an air to Albert. Well, we've seen Albert make that play more times than not. And yes, it was hit hard, but it got underneath his glove. He was right there. 
He's playing in a little bit and I'm sure Albert would tell you that he'll make that play nine times out of ten. So they don't give him an error. It's a hit for Orr. So Orr is at first. He wears one of the all-time greats in hockey. His number four. And he's from Canada. Ontario. And the pitch is taken for a ball. Back to the top of the order. Rafael for Cal in his sixth season with the Atlanta Braves. Hard to believe that he's been here six years. Good speed over there at first. Or is the tying run for Cal the go ahead run. Mulder falls behind two balls and no strikes. Maybe going to go out and slow him down talk to him a little bit. Kyle is singled and scored back in the fifth. He's grounded to second. Grounded to short. Straight away in the outfield. Over 33,000 in attendance tonight here at Turner Field. And a 2-0 pitch to Furcal. He's got some pop. Takes a strike. 33,781 tonight. Three and one. This is where it gets a little dangerous here Al three balls and one strike and again for Cal good power for a leadoff man very good speed on the bases at first you get a ball in the gap this game could be tied and it's very exciting Looks like or is leaning the last time for Cal hits it sharply to short X time and a force play to Prince Alonik. and we have played seven Cardinals holding on they lead it by a run. Fans, don't miss a minute of the action with Wayne and Mike and Jim Jackson. You can listen to Cardinals games live right from your computer. Sign up for Game Day Audio exclusively at stlcardinals.com for Game Day Audio and everything baseball. Log on to stlcardinals.com. And a right-hander, Kevin Grabowski, is into the ball game for Atlanta. Ninth appearance. He's had a tough time retiring the first batter. Only three of the previous eight appearances did he retire the first batter. Entered Wednesday's game. The two runners on in the seventh, but escaped scoreless after a walk. Hudson allowed nine hits in his six innings of work. Six runs. Foster a scoreless frame. One, two, three. And now it's Scott Rowland against Grabowski. Then Sedano and Grizzolanic. And rolling on the first pitch, pops it back foul and out of play. Rolling is a one for three. And it's been a struggle to start this year for Scotty at average at 247, three homers and 12 RBIs. Getting a little better. And last year was atypical as he got off to a real fast start. Had a monster season along with Edmonds and Pujols. Take your pick for the MVP. At the Cardinals on the scoreboard today with a two run base hit. Inside to Roland. And it's two balls and one strike. A lot of walks for Scotty on base percentage is 341. Off the glove of Franco. That'll be a base hit for Roland. Franco's age shows up with his defense. Sure does a little bit. Range isn't quite there. Tough play. Could come up with it. Rolling his second hit tonight. He's two for four. And the leadoff man is on. Out away from him. Goes the opposite field. And there Franco kind of dies for it. Deflects it beyond his second baseman. Range for a single. He's got second hit of the night. 
Why not try something here? Hit and run. Sacrifice. Do something to put the ball in play. Cardinals last few innings a little stagnant. And here's Sedano. Well, Grabowski, a big guy, and very appears to be slow to the plate. And that's Six why I five. said that. Yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of times you get guys that are tall. You know, they're slow to the plate. But he has an extra hitch in there. And so a good opportunity with the lead to take advantage. Count of one ball, no strikes. Room into right center field as Jones, Andrew Jones, shades to Daniel the opposite way, and it's popped up. Foul territory. With Kyle hustling over, the shortstop wants it. He's got it. Good play. That's the first out, and it brings in Gritzelonic. But the night for Mark Gritzelonic. RBI double in the first. A double was left stranded in the fourth, and a single up the middle in the sixth. Don't look now, his average is at 338. I was going to say, how about a week? You know, he hit for the cycle. Only the third time it's happened by a Cardinal at Bush Stadium history. First time since 91 when Lankford did it. And with one out, the first pitch to him. Hit into right. Mondesi backs up, makes the play for out number two. Number 50 in each bullpen. There's Julian Tavares for St. Louis. Bonero. Adam Bonero in the Braves bullpen, number 50. Here's Molina. Does it surprise you to see Tavares up? Right now he would be your pseudo closer. And we're playing in the eighth. You look ahead. Braves have Giles, Jordan, and Franco. So two, three, and four spot coming up in their order. John Mabry's moved to the on-deck circle to be a pinch hitter for Mark Mulder if Molina can extend the inning. There's two outs. First pitch was a ball. Roland is standing at first after a, a leadoff single. Mabry, you saw him at the on-deck circle. The 1-0 pitch. Fouled straight back. Good cut by Molina there. Mulder's only thrown 90 pitches tonight, so. Cardinal Baseball, a production of Bud Sports, and an exclusive presentation of FSN Midwest. Dan, Al, Joel, our Bud Sports crew with you. Tom, me, Mike Kelling, Doug Stanton, Lindsey Polite, Brian McCann, and our fine crew here in Atlanta. The 1-1 pitch. Not a good swing by Molina. And a member of our Bud Sports crew is not here. That's Jeannie Andrews, and she's watching the game, getting ready to deliver a Cardinal fan any minute. Good luck, Jeannie. Good luck. Molina in the hole, one and two. Looks at a ball. Also want to wish get well wishes to Dottie Shep who's watching the ball game big Cardinal fan get well Dottie and Libby O'Connor feeling much much better great we're happy uh, about that 2 2 pitch and the foul ball Libby O'Connor the wife of one of our sales execs Tim O'Connor at Fox Sports Net so glad to hear that Libby is doing better She's going to get out of the hospital, then she's going to have to put up with Tim some more. I'm sure those nurses have <laughs> fed up with Tim, too. One hopper to the second baseman. Molina, another tough night. Over four. Bottom of the eighth is coming up. Take a look at our game recap. It's brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of Major League Baseball. As we move to the bottom of the eighth, the Cardinals with a lead of six to five. 
They about hit the Braves 10-8 in this game. Dave Duncan with the newest addition of the Cardinals staff, Mark Mulder, facing Tim Hudson of Atlanta. At times, both went 1-2-3, and then at other times, it was shaky. Cardinals had four runs in the first, if you're just joining us, in our game recap brought to you by Bank of America. But then the Braves would come back and tie it up with one swing of the bat. Brian Jordan then with one swing of the bat, untied. Albert Pujols, six to four Cardinals. Braves add a run, and that's where we stand right now. It's six to five, and here's Julian Tavares. This will be his 11th appearance of the season. A record of 0-1. He does have one save, filling in for Isringhausen. Opponents hitting over 300 against him. We presume, Al, that you bring in Tavares here. Of course, Isringhausen out on the DL because of the matchups that Tony La Russa must like in this situation with Giles, Jordan, and Franco. Tavares, we were led to believe, would be, along with King, a closer as John Mabry takes over in left field. Yeah, part of a double switch, and Mulder only threw 90 pitches, but... Giles is three for three. Jordan, the next hitter, had the two-run home run to tie it. So I think it's just kind of like, let's turn it over to the bullpen. It gives you seven solid innings. He does have, he's in line for the victory, but tough six outs for the pin. This is really where you miss Isringhausen because you've got the setup man, Tavares, for the eighth, and then Izzy normally for the ninth. Well, but this is one of those situations now where Tony will say, sometimes I'll put my best reliever in in the eighth inning because of the circumstances, who's coming up, and it might be a tougher inning than the possibly the ninth. And one of the reasons, too, maybe you take him out in this spot is because of the man at the plate. Good power for Marcus Giles, and he's three for three tonight against Mulder. RBI, two runs scored. Pair of singles and a double. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Tavares really dropped down and took some off that pitch. And it's 1-2. and two. Good pitch. Uh, speed pitch, but as you said, he gave him that little Laredo. And then gets a breaking ball that's for a strike. Maybe a changeup. Count of 1-2. and two. The next from Tavares. Swing and a miss and a strikeout. Louis Tian then to the plate. He started doing that at about the middle of last season. When he drops down and throws that slider or curveball, it's nasty. Anytime he changes the look, he messes up the timing. Hitters really have to concentrate on the release point. And now it's Jordan. He has a home run tonight. One out, nobody on. Fastball at 93 miles an hour misses up and away. 77 appearances a season ago for Tavares. A shaky start, and then he settled in, and he was outstanding. Isringhausen was outstanding. The bullpen was a major plus a season ago, and while they had question marks coming into the season, it's turning out to be a positive. And Izzy did not make this trip, staying back in St. Louis for treatment. Good pitch there, locking him up, tying him up inside, and apparently, I think Dr. Paletta did an MRI on Izzy, and there really was no defined area that they could even in inject, and he's feeling much better every day, and everyone is pretty well convinced that once that time is up on the disabled list, he'll return back to the Cardinals. And there's a common theme with these two teams winning the last few years. And that's having pretty good, solid closers. Isringhausen was lights out last year. He's been lights out, really, since he got to St. Louis. But then you look over at what Atlanta's had. Alejandro Pena, solid. They've had Smoltz, who was unbelievable in that role. John Rocker, when he was on, was great. Strike on the outside corner. Then he fell apart. He had Mark Wollers before he lost his control. He was good. I mean, Tony LaRusso would tell you, you've got to have that, that guy at the end of the games that can blow people away and close them out. Tavares with a little help from our friend behind home plate. Borderline pitch, but it went to Julian. Set up again out there, the 2-2. Tap foul. Tony LaRusso will tell you, that in about half his managerial time, he's had a... Lights out closer. Other times by committee, and he said, 
You sleep a lot better when you got the bona fide closing. It's a lot easier, but you know, you deal with what you have. And some of these relief pitchers are really relishing the opportunity to pitch later in the game under more pressure circumstances. 2 2 pitch up the middle and a base hit. And a mo 2 and lost him. Let's go pitch by pitch with that at bat, the second hit of the night for Brian Jordan. And the pitch by pitch feature is brought to you by your Mid America Chevrolet dealers. Here he is, to set up there, and the ball was up a little bit. And he's kind of locks him up, ties him up inside. And his breaking ball is flattened out. Then he gets the benefit of the call, the borderline call. Then he pounds this one, but then the ball's up over the middle of the plate and hammered right back through the middle. So there's two or three pitches there. The breaking ball he got underneath and a couple pitches he got up. You got to be careful with that. Tying run on. Franco, the go-ahead run. One out, bottom of the eighth. Good ball game tonight. 6-5 in favor of St. Louis. Cardinals have never trailed. Franco has a hit tonight. Certainly a double play candidate. Does not run all that well. Tavares would love a ground ball here. Right down the middle for a strike as Franco spins away. Looked to be a pretty good pitch. Might have been a bit high, but as you said, we don't really want him to throw the ball up there. He's got a good sinking action on his fastball. See Molina saying, get the ball down. Set up inside, an 0-1 pitch. Now he's got him 0-2. Tavares last outing was Wednesday against Milwaukee his first save of the season he's done some closing in the past been credited with a hold or save in each of his last four appearances it's a 94 mile an hour fastball last delivery we go down sidearm give the breaking ball down and away nope not to where Molina's set up 0 2 pitch how about a double play? Eckstein, Grudzelani, great turn at second base. Double play. 6-4-3. That combination up the middle has turned three of them tonight. Two for Mulder. This one for Tavares. Ninth inning coming up. Mabry will lead it off when we come back to Atlanta. Ninth inning, partner. 6-5 Cardinals. Good ball game tonight. Well, not the type of game that we thought we were going to see, but still Cardinals are in position to win their seventh game, seven out of eight road games. But they'd like to have a little bit of insurance. Here's John Mabry, first plate appearance of the night. New pitcher in, a right-hander for Atlanta. The narrow. Popped up. Foul territory near the Cardinal dugout. That'll stay in play. Benevent makes the play for the first down. And congratulations to John Mabry as we see the numbers for this right-hander. He just reached 10 years of Major League yeah, Service. Yesterday. That's great. And that maxes you out on the pension. Panero, this is his 10th game, and now he's retired nine out of the 10 first batters he's faced. I'm sure this time last year, Al, that John Mabry was wondering if he would reach that mark. And the incentives for him to go down the minor leagues, oh! keep that good attitude, work hard. And he had a nice season for the Cardinals last year and one of the real good guys in that clubhouse. They're all good, but he's a favorite. We are very fortunate to work with a real good group of guys, make our jobs a lot easier. Not every team can say that. No. Well, that's maybe a trade of both these managers too. You know, Good they point. Both, they both have the power base that, you know, they don't have disruptive forces. They get the kind of players they want. Combination of the managers with their GMs too. Yeah. John Sherholtz and Walt Jackety. Which you have to have that to be successful. 1-2 is slap foul. Tonight, Eckstein has singled and scored in the first. Twice he has grounded to second. And he's also grounded to third. One for four. 
Average at 254. One thing I've noticed is that even though Eckstein stands so close to the plate, you try to bust him inside, he'll turn on it. He can turn on it, and there you see that scoreboard. David's never looked so big. You're right. The one two is lifted into center. That may drop for Kyle going out. Can't make it. Drops in for a hit. The 11th Cardinal hit tonight. Midwest Sports Report coming up after the game. Let's check in with the one and only Brent Stover. Thanks a lot, guys. Join us right after the game for the Bushlight Midwest Sports Report, a live interview with the star of tonight's game, plus the Hungo Award and the Rams Rookies Report from Minicamp. And now back to Dan and Al. Guys? Thank you, Brent. Here's Larry Walker. Walker, a bunt single in the first, struck out looking in the second. Also scored the first, scored after his double in the fifth. And popped out to short, rather lined out to short in the seventh. That was off of Foster. Good work by the bullpen of Atlanta. Foster, Grabowski, and now Bernaro. In relief of Hudson, who lasted six innings, allowed nine hits and six runs. One ball, one strike on Walker. Cardinals have been outstanding on the road this year. And Larry drills it high in the air down the right field line and pulls it foul. Certainly a pitch to drive in his wheelhouse. Well, Bonero's throwing some slow off-speed pitches. And just a little bit out in front. The man of a thousand stances. Digging in, Larry Walker. Changes from at bat to at bat. And time is cold. As his career has advanced, Walker has opened up that stance to get around on more balls on the inside portion of the plate. Yeah, but one thing is still pretty consistent is, is very little movement. You know, and it's really a, a rotation of the hips instead of all this head flying open or movement that way. It's kind of like hitting inside a barrel. You know, you can, you can make the turn and stay inside the barrel. In the eighth, Chicago leading Houston, three to two. Walker hits it back to the pitcher for one. Good pick by Fercal to get Eckstein on the force play. Bernero with a little help from his shortstop for Cal as he shakes his head. Two down. Yeah, but his sure double play ball is muffed. Right off the end of the bat, one hopper. Well, he might have turned a little bit too quick, then a sinker right into the ground, and a nice play by Fercal. He's thinking, why couldn't I get that double play? Because now I've got to face yeah. this guy. What was I doing? There the you ball go. gets away, and now a base hit gives the Cardinals a cushion. Well, but he might uh, intentionally pass Pujols here, too. It'd be crazy not to, wouldn't they? Now you might see how, you know, throw a pitch or two. See, Franco kind of was he really there. You know, he tried to just snap throw, and but Walker didn't have had half a step lead if he even had that, and he picked off his first baseman. I go back to the scenario with Bonds last year. Remember Jeff Supon on the mound? And they tried to see if he would go out of the zone a little bit. Yep. And Bonds lost it for a three-run home run that put the Giants on top by six runs. At that point, it was out of reach. I'd rather do it this way. Four straight, don't even mess with it. And that's what Bobby Cox has elected to do. It's a lot simpler. And take away the the element of a pitch getting away from him. Ned Yost did it in the fourth <laughs> inning the other day with Albert Pujols. He'd seen enough. <laughs> and that's in, why it's important for Jim Edmonds or whoever hits behind Albert to do some damage. That's the only way you can stop the opposition from walking Pujols is if the guy behind him does more damage. Edmonds with two RBIs on the night. 
change about front. Said Jimmy, you got a big base hit in the first, an RBI single, but came into this game a 125 average here at Atlanta, at uh, Turner Field. No balls, a strike inside to Edmonds. Cardinals have pounded out 11 hits tonight. Nobody up and loose in either bullpen. Fastball misses low. Scott rolling on deck. Atlanta will have Andrew Jones, Johnny Estrada, and Raul Mondesi coming up in their half of the night. A two and one hit hard, but to Giles. Cardinals strand two. They've left seven on the night. Bottom of the night is coming up. Okay. You're at the wrong game, pal. Chicago was leading that game in the eighth inning, three to two, for the Rocket and Houston. Come on, buddy boy, what are you doing? That guy's in the right stadium. The other guy got on the wrong flight. Thought he was going to Houston, wound up in Atlanta, and here he is. Let's see if Tavares can close this one out. Got a big, big double play to end the eighth, four, six, three on Franco, and now it's Andrew Jones to lead it off here in the ninth with about half the crowd on their feet. A one-run lead for St. Louis. They have never trailed in this game. Bullpen trying to hold on for Mark Mulder. Jones with tremendous power, three home runs on this young season. And the first pitch, a slider misses inside, 1-0. Backing up on him a little bit. I'm staying on top of that pitch and flattening out. Jones down the left field line and pulls it foul. One ball, one strike. Tony La Russa going two innings tonight, hopefully with Tavares. And really, he's only throwing 15 pitches with the two here in this inning. So really, his pitch count. Shouldn't have too much problem with that. One ball, one strike. Jones is hit with the pitch. Well, Julian was able to get the ground ball, the double play to end the eighth. He needs one here. I know Bob Gibson is saying right now, he's saying late in the ball game, he never liked to throw inside, especially with a home run pitch. Could tie the game up. And that just really puts a burden on the team now when you get that leadoff man on. You've got to make that pitch inside and get it in there for far enough and you run the risk of hitting the man and putting him on. Or if you don't get it in there, you run the risk of a cheap home run, the shortest part of the field. Here's the switch hitting Estrada. Rolling off the line even with the bag. Pitch misses in. Estrada hitting from the left side now. 250 from the left side and all nine of his RBIs but another double play Canada. He's already hit two ground balls. In this case it would be two down. One ball no strikes. And the Braves catcher Estrada tonight is over three pair of ground outs. He's also fly to right. Jones not the threat to run as he was earlier in his career. Good pitch. And a strike to even the count at one ball. One strike. Estrada hit 314 a season ago. The switch hitter in his first full season. Now he squares the bunt. Throw down to first. Oh, Pujols just saved Molina. Wow, would that be? You know, Molina has been a little careless with his throws. And here Estrada trying to punch at it. Molina's 
standing flat-footed, tries to throw it. He's got the arm strength to do it, but he threw it right in the dirt. And Albert, with those soft hands, does a nice job not only to catch it, but applying quick tags. That gets past him. Jones could be at third, certainly at second. Well, he's he's at third. He could have scored. That would have gotten all the way down to the corner. Walker would have had a long run. Jones still runs pretty well. Estrada missed on the bunt attempt. Now there's two strikes. Gets a piece to stay alive. Mondesi on deck. Tavares trying to pick up his second save. He had 11 a couple years ago with Pittsburgh. I think he had four last year with St. Louis. That big pick him up. Well, Izzy's out if Cardinals don't blow any leads. Everybody builds confidence. Where does he go with this pitch on one and two? Line drive, base hit. And Jones will stop at second. And the first two have reached. Another pitch that kind of hung up. A one-two mistake there. And now you will pinch run for Estrada, no doubt about it. The go-ahead run at first, tying run in scoring position at second. A high delivery there, Al. Yeah, it's very bad location. Off speed, just right up in the wheelhouse and hit hard right between the hole. Ray King just got up and starts to get loose in the bullpen. You're asking Tavares to go two innings. Pinch runner at first. Langerhans, Ryan Langerhans is the uh, runner and the winning run at first. Andrew Jones is at second. Now what do you do here with Mondesi? Well, they're actually playing the corners like he's going to bunt. Keep the runner close at second. Would give him hitting lanes and he pushes it foul. I think you let him swing away one time and then see if he could butt it instead of doing it this way. Bobby Cox has been at the helm a long time and he knows his personnel better. But if you look at uh, Mondesi, it didn't look like yeah, his last sacrifice bump was in 97. And he didn't look like he was very accomplished at doing so. And the reason I say that, the, the lanes. Well, you might, you know, it, sometimes you, you like to see it and then you get the foul pitch and then you take it off nothing and one the count who holds is charging at first and the pitch is blooped it will be caught who wants it Fritz Alonik is taller and feel fly was called also that's a big out huge now double play will end the game Chipper Jones has been called on deck crowd going wild here at Turner Field you've got Ray King getting loose in the bullpen. Will this be it for Tavares? Does Tony La Russa want to counter? As we talked about, the switch hitter struggling from the left side because of that injury. Look at those numbers against Tavares. Right there should dictate the possibility of the change. Here they, comes Dave Duncan, the Cardinal pitching coach, out of the uh, dugout. He's going to call for Ray King. Now he'll come out there because he wants to give a scouting report and a few words of encouragement to Ray King versus Tony just making a change. Now do you pull back Chipper Jones? You would think so if he can't hit from the right side. He's two for six against King, but again, he's a switch hitter, and he cannot hit from that right side with that injury. Tavares, his night is done. And we've got first and second one out. A nail biter here in Atlanta. 6-5, one out with two runners on. Former Brewer, former Brave, now at the Cardinals. Ray King, part of the J.D. Drew trade a couple of seasons ago, will be asked to close this thing out. This will be his 11th appearance. 
opponents hitting under 250 against him. You know Ray would love the double play and take game one. Chip for Jones will be the hitter. Chipper's got that bad foot, so somewhat of a risk putting him up here with one out. Sure, the double play really becomes a key factor, but the numbers for Chipper Jones to start this year have been tremendous. The biggest threat in this lineup has been out the last week. 314 career home runs by the switch hitter. Ray King has one major league save. And Chipper leads the league with a 513 on base percentage. And a 698 slugging percentage. Hitting 381 on the year. And he hasn't played since Sunday when he injured his foot. Timing could be a factor. We will see first pitch of beauty on the outside corner from King. That's a big pitch right there. Borderline pitch down and away gets the call. Chipper. How about those numbers? Clutch hitting 450, seventh inning or later. Runners at first and second. Tying run at second. Winning run at first, and Chipper pops it up. This Pujols have a play. Here the Braves dugout. He's got it for out number two. Huge out right there. We turn to tonight's play of the game, and it's brought to you by Bud Light. We will take you back to the fifth. Albert Pujols with an opposite field home run. This gave the Cardinals a 6-4 lead. It's now 6-5. Folks, that's your Bud Light play of the game. Eddie Perez is going to pinch hit their backup catcher. I knew we'd talk about backup catchers today. You were right. Albert checking where he is up against the rail and then steps a foot back towards the playing field gets the second out big play there so Ray's always wanted to be a closer and for the night he has a chance to close out this dramatic game for his teammates Dave Duncan will talk to him or did they go to the bullpen they're going to go to the bullpen right now King is not happy. You can see that on the mound. He gets the key out. Chipper Jones, Al Reyes trotting in from the bullpen. Cardinals one out last season before his call up. Al Reyes was an all star in the Pacific Coast League with Memphis, and he was a closer. He had 23 saves. And he'll be asked to save this ball game. The Cardinals are one out away here in Atlanta with runners at first and second. Six to five, St. Louis. Are you surprised that uh, Bobby Cox did not counter with LaRoche here, left-handed hitter? Well, there was, it's, that's his last position player on the bench. If they tie this game up, Perez would have to go in to catch as Estrada was pinch run for. It's up to Reyes and Perez here with runners at first and second. Two down. Cardinals is trying to hold on. Al Reyes has three major league saves. The first pitch is outside. His last major league save was with Los Angeles back in 2001. Crowd on their feet. That's his only one in the National League and two in the American League. The 1 0 pitch. Curveball of beauty. Good pitch right there. Perez complaining, but it's going to fall on deaf ears. This is a, appeared to be a good pitch, and that tells you it still is a good pitch. Two strikes away. Andrew Jones, the tying run at second. Ground ball left side. Roland gobbles it up. Throws to first, and the Cardinals win it. 
They're now 15 and 6. Mark Mulder is 500 at 2 and 2, and the Cardinals beat Tim Hudson as he takes his first loss. He's now 2 and 1. Reyes the save, his first since 2001. Albert goes deep. That home run proves to be the game-winning RBIs. Midwest Sports Report coming up next.